بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. In the last session we were discussing سورة الإخلاص which basically means sincerity. Okay, so قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد. Again, I I I want you to always remember the title because the title speaks really. Volumes. Uh, how really the the belief in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is 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 a journey, and it's not like one time event, but it is uh, a journey to uh, purify that belief. I mean, and to bring it to to the next level, uh, and and so the the word class. Okay, although we translate it into sincerity, but really like when you purify something. So as we always say that our uh, approach and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it really means to, to uh, all, all the time purify that path towards Him. So anything that comes between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, it could be as, as, as uh, uh, simple as an idol or maybe a very complex like the market I mean, or, or wealth or money or, uh, or property or, or uh, position or status or anything may threaten really that relationship between the human being and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, uh, ikhlas takes that really meaning and for us Later we'll say, فَعْبُدِ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصًا لَهُ الدِّينَ مُخْلِصًا From ikhlas, the same thing. How you can purify that relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the same verse, it says, أَلَا لِلَّهِ الدِّينُ الْخَالِصِ So, the, 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 this is the, the, the a pure religion or system that really connects this or, or governs this relationship between the human being and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs or should always be purified. And, uh, and I think uh, the, 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 our job okay, is how we can create an environment where the human beings always remember that and st struggle okay in their life to purify that relationship and that would be the best if you like antidote the best uh, resistance to the emergence of this the following surah which talks about al kafiri mm -hmm. it's, if you want really to to prevent Kufr is not to go and kill, <laughs> but, but really create an environment where that will not be able like to grow. We need to shift in the paradigm because sometimes it may be easy to say, why don't we kill them and they are done? But you cannot. This is not really the way. Okay, it will, it, you kill from here, it will appear there. But it's a better environment. I mean, the better way is really to create an environment where people can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rejection of Allah or his instructions this denial this extreme is, is continue to happen is continue to occur but how we can keep it as a minority how we can keep it at the least, least level. And this is what happened due in Medina later on when the, the society was faced with a very, very dangerous situation. It is an internal problem. It was nifaq, hypocrisy. Is, uh, is there something more dangerous than yeah. somebody who uh, uh, behaves as if he is from inside but he or she is planning 
against them. So they came to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew them one by one. If not by his <laughs> instinct and by his knowledge and, and, as, as a human being, as a prophet, he would know <laughs> them by the help of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. There is no question about that. And the, 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 his companions came to him and said, "Since you know them, Muhammad, why don't you kill them?" So you see that that idea was still there, and Muhammad Sallallahu immediately said, "No, no, no." How this is going to be perceived? People will say Muhammad is killing his own friends, his own companions. But the deeper meaning is that this is not the way. And there is a beautiful surah entitled Al Munafiqun. And if you look at it carefully, you will see that approach that we are talking about. Create an environment that will be very difficult to the hypocrites to affect the society or to bring more around them. <laughs> so they, if, even if they are there, they will remain minority and by attrition the, the, the problem will really disappear. It's, it's very beautiful and now we can apply the same thing even in, if, if you really want your kids okay to ha have a, a a good education all right and uh, basically safe school all right what what do you like to see in that school because not you and me only are concerned about our kids. I mean, and, and the, 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 the ills that, the social ills that can infest certain schools from alcohol to using drugs to bullying to all of these things. So what would be, I mean, what can we do? Can we say, oh, we have to, to cut on this and put them in jail and whoever does, what, what is that going to help? But to create an environment which makes it very difficult, you will have programs in sports, programs in music, programs... Well, you do expect somebody who is really playing the violin or the cello or the or percussion, just as any, or playing wrestling or basketball or volleyball, to be also concerned about these issues? It's very unlikely. You see what that is? So you create an environment for the kids to, to look at better concerns. And then even if there are people who may be thinking about these things, they will not find a good ground for that. And so the, the, the bad now finds very difficult to survive. But take another school where this is, these become the problems. Even if you want to be good, it will be difficult. So you see what I mean? So when you see in the final order of Quran, you see, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ So it's, 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 it's not really that... Uh, you, this is the way, okay, to prevent this problem, okay, of becoming the prevailing situation okay this rejection this uh, extreme okay keep it really the minority and after قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ comes قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ is that right so you have to be very vigilant to keep that environment clean, to keep that environment always uh, reminiscent of Allah. But what, what does it really mean, Allah? How do we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Through His beautiful names. So we have, are talking about concepts that need really like to prevail in the society. 
And how does this surah start? قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ What is al-falaq? Read the translation. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Say I seek refuge with the Lord after dawn. Ah, what is the dawn then? Of light. You see, Allah نُورُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ So, are you interested in light? Or in the darkness? Are you interested in the truth or falsehood? Are you interested in life or in that? You, you see? So, if you create that environment where people all the time are seeking the truth, seeking light, okay, through Allah from whom emanates light and the truth. He is the truth. He is the light. Is that right? Al-Haq. Huwa Al-Haq. Al-Mubeen. Truth manifest. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself. We don't own the truth. We approach the truth. This is a life of searching for reality. But the, the, as we have seen before, the day of the judgment, the hereafter, will be the reality. It's very important, uh, I mean, the concept here. Okay? We live all our life as a journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking light to adjust our path towards Him. And we live our life all the time approaching the truth. This is why we said earlier, whatever we have said is not Quran. <laughs> but we are uh, trying to <clears throat> approach that uh, truth. And if, if I if, uh, see something better what I have reached so far, I will abandon mine and take the, the, the other one. Because that is my objective. Is really to seek that the truth. So the, the, the uh, so I, I again, if you put it in perspective, so I feel that it is really the right time for that surah, this short surah, to be revealed after talking about the problem of kufr. Kufr is, is a disease that may inflict anyone. Even the prophets, they have to struggle all the time to, to pr protect themselves from that illness. Let alone <laughs> us, the, the weaker, if you like, human beings. We need all the time to fight that problem. But unfortunately, we have put in the minds of, of, of the, our kids that, oh, that, that, that kufr is something outside. <laughs> you see, we are fine, we are good. But, oh, these are the people outside who <laughs> have the problem. Instead of saying, this is a disease that has the potential to inflict any human being. But if you know, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ if you know, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ That is the environment that will protect you. Is there something more repeated in our life, daily life, more than قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ How many times, even every day we say that? If not in our prayer, after our prayer. <clears throat> now I really understand the practice of Muhammad sallallahu How he was able to make these things part of our life. Our daily life. You, you see the value now? 
what we what we uh, what is recommended to say after praying? What? Tell me. What do what do you say after after you pray? But what are the surahs or we? Uh, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum, which is not really different from qul huwa Allahu ahad, but taking it to the highest really level. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, qul a'udhu bi rabb al-falah, qul a'udhu bi rabb al-nas. But unfortunately they, it became something that we say, including ourselves, I'm not talking about anybody else. Okay, but is it really... Uh, healthy after 40 or 50 years to understand that it should have been given to us with the milk <laughs> is that right as meaning not as just repetition of words you said it so right uh, that you know about the numbers, you know. Hazrat Adam never said and so on. And Hazrat Yunus would have never said La ilaha illallah and the You know, they, they felt that there is something on their part and that's why they are asking for help. I, I can say more than that. Quran is talking about the prophets, not about you and me. About the prophets. فَقَدْ وَكَّلْنَا بِهَا قَوْمًا لَيْسُوا بِهَا بِكَافِرِينَ The idea is you are dealing with a human being. Yes, that human being reached a very high level. You know, you need more than, more than Satan himself. He was among the, the angels, but he fell. We all know that he fell. And he's trying to, to work on us to fall. With him, we will see it like in, in the next in the next surah. So the potential is there. What is, what is the the idea? Is how to be visional, and the higher you go, your level of visionless becomes lower or higher. Higher. Naji used to tell me, like somebody walking on the street to keep balance is easier than somebody riding a. A bicycle, more than somebody who is driving a car. What about somebody driving an airplane or a rocket? I mean, you see how, how difficult it is? And, and I'm sure some of you have been to, to museums or uh, amuse, amusement parks where they uh, put you in, in, in a simulation thing. You, it gives you the same idea how difficult to maintain balance as you are elevated physically the same thing in the world of, of meaning the same thing the higher you go you, you need to be more vigilant to maintain that level and to go to the next i i will uh, ask brother naji like to I was reading uh, to Surah today, this morning. And, uh, Alhamdulillah, I, I may be getting totally a lot of new ideas that I, I, <coughs> I didn't thought about. But what's amazed me also that this Surah is these two surahs, what they did, "Qul a'udhu bi Rabbil Falak" and "Qul a'udhu bi Rabbil Nas," is this type of religionalization for for the uh, Islamic world view, uh, how human being is seen and how the world surrounding him is seen at the same time, and also it's it's very well connected to what we said so far, and also I will suggest because we have a lot of very skilled people here, if we can edit what we said so far and put it together and we can make from it, uh, you know, a book, I will say, for how, how to approach Al-Qur'an. We can extract from it a lot of, you know, uh, implementation, for example, in our school uh, curriculum, 
and how also we teach our kids how to understand the Quran in our time. I think there's a lot of things we can do, but really we need to help each other and to work together and to have that attribute of Rabb. And we talked about Rabb is that ability to put things to put things together, to educate, to elevate, to rise to our level, higher level. So it means if we work to help each other that we can acquire this attribute of Rabb, we may implement it toward what we did so far. So we can make from it something that can help others and the other generation because the idea of Rabb also that make us think it's not really selfishness type of refuge or escape. You need to think of other. And you need, this is, there's no way you can uh, 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 seek refuge by yourself. It, we are human beings, you cannot even live without a society. And mm -hmm. so this is very interesting. So we, and from the day one, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم اقرأ باسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى We saw this together How the Quran at the beginning talk a lot about Rabb So the, the prophethood, uh, the last prophet Even if it's the last prophet You need to think of others And this is how you can seek refuge Don't say this is my end, this is the last prophet I reached the highest possible level, Sidrat al Muntaha, Qaba Qawsayni wa Adna, and that's it. No, 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 no. If you can measure your, if you are, you, you've been successful or not, you need to see if you were able to realize that attribute in your life and the life of your society and also the universe surrounding <coughs> us. We, we live in the, within this universe and we have, we need really to take care of it. So the idea of Rabb here is very interesting. And قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Here there is generalization. And even Al-Falaq, translation you can see down. But it's really more than that. Because Al-Falaq, in شِقَاق عَنْ بَاطِنِ الشَّيْءِ As you, you know, so you split something and you get from it another thing. And I think this is very related to يُخْرُجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرُجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ so from any living uh, creature, Allah can make from it living uh, things. And vice versa, from any living things also you can see, you can make from it dead things. It's, it's, this is life. It's, 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 uh, we saw together, You see the grass, for instance, right now we are in some time and very green, but just we know after six or eight months it will die so we should we need also to create that type of science how we can perfect life and keep it so how death not does not become an obstacle for us to continue our journey but also how to be aware that anything we achieve كُلُّ شَيْءٍ هَالِكٌ إِلَّا وَجْهُ you know, it will happen, it will arrive, you know, a moment that will not be able to answer our question. We should not become the prisoner of what we produce. So this, this is very, very deep awareness about قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَرَقِ And here also you are seeking other people help. So because anything that is very successful today, we should be aware it will die tomorrow. So we need to prepare ourselves, our society, the environment surrounding us, that to go to the next step. And so this is really a generalization for what we saw so far and how, how we deal with it. And, and we, see, we saw also together that فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَقْصَرْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ We saw this in the Surah Al-Inshirah, together. So it's, it means any project we move, it will have an end. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be always the goal for us. 
so we can move. So we take it as really a step toward Allah. We saw from the Surah 1, the last ayah was, Wasjud Waqtarib. And we know that as sujood is the closest, if you like, position toward Allah. Aqrabu ma yakrul abdu min rabbihi wa huwa sajid. But also as sujood is very dangerous position that can, that can kill us. Because it can give us that feeling we reach it the highest possible, you know, position that we can we can make uh, can realize. So this is why Quran will say, "Waktarim, free yourself from it, because you were behind what you reach it. So don't be the prisoner of what you know we're able to realize." And have always this awareness that always you can get from what you realize something better. You can if you can make from it the new zero, if you like, the new start. But you cannot go down. Don't uh, go to that regress. There's always think about how you can go closer. What should work then? So it means how to get closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So it means if humanity reaches a high level uh, of, for, let's say for example, we can live together as man and woman, okay? And no one, for example, is allowed to uh, get slaves. We should not just ask ourselves, oh man, it used to be slaves there and we have some, even ayat that talked about slavery. And why we don't go back and have slaves and we practice what you know the companion and uh, and the other prophet prophet who you know who's used even to to practice this is this is this is a very ridiculous so it really it's not a question here you can go back there's no way you cannot do it so the prophet who themselves they were also working very hard to have the new falak if you like new dawn new light to elevate the human kind take him to higher level. This is where we are connected with them. But they are also limited by their context, their ability, their time, their environment, etc., their life. But the, for the principle, we, we are connected with them through this principle. How to elevate human being, society, and take them to get closer to Allah. So when we reach that ability, when we reach that freedom, we should not come and back and try to argue about it why we don't take it from each other. This is this is very, very, very wrong, wrong path. And the ayah too is a Quran says, Min Sharri Ma khalaka. And this is also is very interesting. Any creation, and we said when we talked about the action and direction. It can take the wrong direction. As human beings, we can give things the wrong direction. We have this ability. Even as Salat itself, we saw together also, Wailun Lil Musallim. There is big punishment to even to whom who, who pray. Why? Yura'una wa yamna'una al ma'un. So just that show off. In practice, you don't show anything that can reflect why we need Salat, why you are doing Salat. You are not even able to share anything with others, with your neighbor, the small things. So your Salat is, is you, are, you are a prisoner of Salat. Because the Salat, the main thing is just, is, it's a mean to help you as you will be, you know, to connect between this life and the hereafter, if you like, and connect both, both worlds while you are here, showing that you are able to get closer to Allah and to have Allah as, you know, as Salat, we, we ask at least, you know, the, the, we, we should be aware of space and time when we talk together. This is why each time we, we, we make Salat, we say, which Adhar, Asr, Maghrib, what's what is this? This is just awareness of space and time. But also you will ask, which, where is the Qibla? 
how I can I can direct myself toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as to them. But even a salat itself, it can lose its meaning when it loses its purpose. And we saw together from ayah word, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. And any creation, it has purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created things with their real purpose. And as human being, Allah gave us the ability also to create. But we have the challenge to always give the purpose of anything we create that what Brother Walid reminds us, Allah should be always the purpose. And Allah is Al-Hakim, Al-Alim, Al-Ghafoor, Al-Rahim. So through these beautiful names, so anything we create or any creation we try to, to, to deal with, we should always bear in mind that Allah should be always the direction of what, what we do. So this is this is awareness and vigilance, if you like. That as human beings, you can create something that, 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 that is defeat the purpose of any Allah creation. That totally will take us astray, give us take us to the to the wrong direction. And this is as we said in as salat or anything. You know, you can use a camera to record lecture or share with other people, but you can use it to record something very bad and you just publish it. And anything, it means anything in our life, it can take the wrong direction. So we should always be aware and have that min sharri ma khala, seek refuge, so things don't get astray, don't take the wrong direction. Anything, even this lecture itself, it can take, it can help me to get closer to Allah, but also it can help me to get far from Him. You know, it can, Allah, you know, shaitan, right? and even myself, I always, as Brother Walid said, you cannot resolve the issue of kufr by killing al kafir Because you have that seed yourself. And by killing, you are adding more water on it. <laughs> you are feeding that seed, really. So it means any one of this is why from Aya 1 you should deal with the human being and that ability to go toward the right direction, toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or get the right direction. And we need to work together that we can help each other not to take take that direction. So in other words, like really the, 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 uh, if really our objective is really al fala I mean like yeah. light and truth, and to bring the best of ourselves and the best of everything around us, of, of all the, the achievements that we have uh, accomplished in, in, in this life. So there are the, 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 the threats. Min sharri ma khala. Okay, so anything that... So one way of really losing that ability of to, to see al fala. It's really like to give wrong direction to our own actions. Or when we don't see the wrong direction taken by, by, by others and try really like to uh, 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 make them aware of that because they may take all of us in that, in that wrong really direction. Superstition is another problem that it, if you believe in, in these really superstitions, is it, uh, uh, is it, are you going really to, to, to uh, progress? Or they will limit your ability to extract or to bring you to the next level, to extract the best of what is really around you? Or it will limit you? It's like, or, or when we, if, if I just, uh, 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 lend myself to the idea oh there is people who are envious of, of me and I am not able like to Quran is saying don't don't worry about about this okay these I mean these are really it's, it's, they are not going to change your outcome but it reflects on them they are the wrong 
doers. They are really uh, 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 taking the wrong direction because mentally they are really uh, wishing bad to others. You, you see, it's, it's not the action, but what really is directing the action of these people. You see what? So the, the, at, the, at the mental level, okay, how we can create a society that wish goodness for others. And so they can work for it. But if they wish bad things for others, this one will be the direction of their actions. So Quran is going to the root cause of the problem. Not that they are really going to make a... But if I imagine that I lend myself to that idea, I will not move. <laughs> it will really imprison me. You see what I mean? Or Quran is referring like in a very symbolic way to those who use really these superstitious actions, okay, like making knots in the in the in the strings or whatever, okay, and, and blowing into them to, to, to make like thinking that they are really giving bad uh, 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 outcome really to Quran is saying this is uh, uh, forget about the action itself but what is the intention what, you see what I mean that is not going really to help the society to progress to see the light to see the truth to move from one level to another if they imagine I mean, you see how I mean uh, look at and medicine as, as an example okay uh, people start like sometimes say oh these people are still like following the superstitious uh, uh, practices because they don't know <laughs> you see what I mean but how you remove superstition when you have knowledge it will eliminate you see you can you see the light <laughs> but when you don't have it you start really injecting these false ideas, okay? Because you, you, you need to ex explain things. You see what I mean? So, so Quran is saying you need to always seek light, seek the truth, seek knowledge. It's, it's very beautiful here. The first ayah is a hope. The Quran starts with hope. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Al-Falaq is really the hope. Yeah. There is always a possibility to get out, you know, from very hard situation you found yourself in it. And just the Al-Quran gave this the image. Remember a lay, you know, and down come up. It's, it's very when the lay becomes very dark. But that does not really prevent light to come so just take from that that image that that let's work that we can make our life like that don't give up when you see darkness regardless how deep it is there is always ability to get out from it and in a very successful way there's al-fara but it's really from it this is, this is the hope. And after that, the other ayah is also there is very deep understanding of evil, of a sharp. Ayah two is generalization. Anything, you know, regardless what it is, it hides also the bad side of it. So be very vigilant, be very careful. Anything, as we said, even the prayer, even sadaqa, even hajj, even siyab, even the things that you think you are doing really purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Success, anything is so, There is nothing fails like success as God will always remind us when we say. And also what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa teaching, te uh, taught his people. You remember when we, what we say at an Eid time? Nasara abdahu wa a'azza jundahu hazam al-ahzab wahdahu Whenever that we did it, the success is our. We achieve it. See, Allah did it. He, 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 uh, Nasr Abda, he, the victor. 
he, 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 he brought victory to, uh, to his servant. Uh, he is behind defeating uh, the enemy. It's, it's just to have that ability to free ourselves of, from very successful movement. Because we become very weak and we can, we, we can prison us. This is why also as sujood, we repeat it. If you take a rak'ah as a unit for salat, it's the only place where we repeat things twice is as sujood. Because it's the most difficult moment to free ourselves from it. So this is generalization. After that, من شر غاسق إذا وقع. And this is very, very interesting. And and غسق الليل اشتد ظلامه. You know, the night become غاسق if you like, where it become very, very dark. But here is not just a layer. This is in general. Let's say, for example, if, if even at the civilization level, a certain society will, will you know, have uh, culture, civilization will reach state when it no longer be able to move. So it becomes also classic. It, it enters a stage of darkness. It will die. So unless that new generation free themselves from their parents, and their ancestors' experience, they can also die. Because it's, it's, it's another type of darkness. You know? It, it's very interesting, even if the level of understanding. You, for example, let's say you are in the fifth grade. You cannot go to the sixth grade, if you like, and, unless you free yourself from what you achieve. And you work very hard to enter a new state. So this is very interesting at the individual level, at the community level, at the societal level, at also civilizational level. That غاسق إذا وقع. We should be very, very careful. Right now, our Ummah really, we are dying mainly because of that darkness. Because, of, because our previous Ummah was able to achieve very high level of civilization and, and culture. Really. But right now, we become prisoner of what they achieve. We don't like to do our job to free ourselves from our, our, you know, our experience. So we can just bridge with them, but we have the responsibility to create a new environment and a new experience that can help us to continue our trip, to continue moving toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And right now is, is all our question, hey, this is what it was done before. So we should stop. We should do the same today. Because, you know, we don't understand that there's a problem with what was done in the past. It's, I think our understanding needs to change. Our, even, like, even if it were at that time was the right decision, but it was in response to the challenges that, of that our ancestors really lived. But today we are really facing completely the Quran, the Quran has a very beautiful say. Quran, when you talk about Ajal, the, 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 the dead, if you like, uh, ajal is... Life, uh, lifespan. Life, lifespan. But it talks about ajal, it does really, the Quran does not use it, use it very meaningfully at the individual level. The Quran talks about ajal at the ummah level. لكل أمة أمة أجل. To each nation, if you like, to each ummah, there is an end. ولكل أجل, if you like, كتاب. Any agent has also a kitab, has its world view, has its ability to see things, has its ability to resolve issues, has its ability to answer challenges. But that ummah will die when that kitab is no longer able to help that ummah to move. So you need to have the new kitab, the new kalima, if you like, the new world view to help and create a new Ummah that can continue its journey. The other Ummah cannot, cannot play your role. So this is true also at the individual level. Your kids, they are not yours. They are not
not, they, they, they are your kids, but they are not you. They are really different. And they, were, they have been created for a new era, and they were facing totally different challenges. So you can still bridge with them, but they cannot repeat no, exactly what you've been doing to resolve their problems. And let's say, for example, take justice as high value. Allah is the just. So we worship Allah, he is the just. As Muslims, it's very interesting. We are not just interested to justice, but really we worship Allah, he is the just. So let's say, for example, you try to implement uh, justice within your family, within, between your kids. It would be very easy, you know, take it, just share between them what you cooked for them. It would be very, maybe it's easy to achieve, sometimes it's very hard. But, but imagine, for instance, today you try to implement justice globally for the 7 billion people. Imagine how many, how, how many sciences you will need, how many effort, how many quality you quality. How complex it is. How complex it is. So you cannot achieve it, even if the just were connected to the same thing. We are also, all of us are seeking justice. But this new context, it will need totally a new paradigm, a new world view, a new way to approach things, so you can achieve the same things. You can keep going toward the same. And anything, wisdom, uh, uh, no, no, no. forgiveness, etc. Etc. So it means really this is very interesting. And this idea of ghasim ida waqa that awareness it, even at the societal level, and that you can reach a moment that it will be impossible to can continue with what you have. It's interesting. Like it's like falling on you, mm -hmm. like as if it's really stopping your journey. You are not going really anymore forward so yeah. you need really like to think differently yeah even, even at the scientific level for example let's say you will go to <clears throat> an atomic level and all what you have you have newton newton physics it become gasser it become very dark it is really the darkness it has nothing, you will see the results has nothing to do with your theory. Unless you move to a new science that can help you to explain what you are able to see. You will not be able to, to explain it. So this is very interesting so that we should always be aware that no one else will play our role. And we have nothing to do. I mean, uh, we have. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. It's not personal. I no. mean, we have nothing, nothing against <laughs> Newton. I mean, and, and that. Yeah. The same thing. We love our parents. We don't question that. But does not really mean that I have really to abide by the same of the conclusions they have really reached. Mm -hmm. And Quran is very clear about that. Quran is talking about will ask people the question you want really to, to, to continue following the same ideas because this is what they say we have found our our ancestors our our uh, uh, founding fathers if you like on, on on a certain idea and we are following it Quran will say قال أولو جئتكم بأهدى مما وجدتم عليه آباءكم أهدى means more guiding which means that they were guiding they are not they were not false they were not bad no 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 but it was good for their time now you have to move to a higher level of guidance because you are living a new time you see the word أهدى here is the operating word yeah, you, you see Huda, you, know, you are all familiar with Huda. Ahda means it guides better, which means they were good, they were not bad. But now Quran is asking to move into a new era. And the sign is when the darkness 
and tense it, become untense. You should take it as a sign. You should deal with death as something that does not stop life, but it's needed really for life to continue. So this is very interesting at the societal level. It's very, very deep and very interesting. So it means, as, as Brother Salid uh, is saying, regardless, it can be even the Ummah of the Prophet. It becomes the time it will end. Ummah of Musa, Musa was Prophet. Isa needed totally new revelation to continue the journey. Isa is not against Musa. But Isa is saying, Something that was, was forbidden for you, for you, I'm going to make it permissible. permissible. It was haram, now it will become halal. What is that? So many things. Let's take this one, take this small thing. Okay, take for example, uh, at the time, uh, before Adam, let's say. Okay, people, uh, my daughter can marry her sister. My, my daughter can marry his, her, her brother, right? Okay? Now, for instance, this was, for example, the opposite. This was something halal, right? Because that, it was that context, that time. But now, is it possible to say, hey, this was possible, so let's do it today? We are moving toward the higher level. You, this is why I said you cannot regress. Let's say, for example, today we are moving toward a zawjiya, disparity between man and woman. There is a lot of fighting that makes this possible, that can, we can sit together, we can talk in high level with each other. Are we going to destroy it in the name that 400, 500 years ago this was not possible? Are we saying, for instance, uh, 1,000 years ago, we used to use women as, you know, a slave or object of desire to sell them, you know, and enjoy, enjoy the, what we bought. Are we going to say, hey, this was practiced before, hey, let's do it today. This is very ridiculous because you need to understand things in their context and see the movement, the direction of movement. The humanity achieved a lot. So when it, we move to higher level, we should not just come and... Are we going to say today, for example, uh, in the 60s, let's just say in the United States, you know, it's, uh, black people cannot sit... Not the black the, people. I, I was in San Diego, if you have seen this... Uh, <laughs> you have been to that uh, uh, hotel, uh, U.S. Grand. Uh, it's very interesting. There is a... a uh, a restaurant inside that hotel and there is a, a plaque written on it. Uh, it it used to be only for men in 1971 mm -hmm. that happened in 1971 they will not allow women to go into that restaurant before three o'clock in the afternoon so six ladies made a reservation under the name of Sydney so they did not real Sydney can be a man or a woman name so when they came, they did not allow them to enter because they are, they are women. This is written on that plan. So they fought. These six women fought for their right. That this is not right for this uh, restaurant not to allow women to go at any time they want, the same way as, as men. And basically they, they won. And that plaque is really in the memory of of these people praising them, these six women who stood up for their... This is 1971. Wow. Not in 1571. <laughs> 1971. But please don't understand from this that I am really like uh, pointing fingers. I would really more interested in the outcome. I am interested in the movement that Nash is talking about. Move the society moved in that direction, and we have to admire that progress and support it. And the other day, one of my medical students came to me. She, I asked her, "What are you doing, uh, young lady?" 
very bright. She, uh, she said, uh, I am working uh, with, with a woman group, of, uh, uh, like a club. But I am not a feminist. This is what she's trying, like, in a defensive way. I said, look, that you, as woman, you have achieved a lot. But this is also a slippery slope. You may lose it at any time. I admire what you are doing. Continue doing what you are doing. Because if you stop working, they will take it from you in, in a heartbeat. And you can see her eyes become very bright. <laughs> I'm telling you, she was starting like, to be defensive. I am not a feminist. No, no, this is not the idea. This is not the, the problem here. The point is, you need to preserve what you have. And how we measure it, as we said, Allah is Al-Adil, the just. This is more just. So let's keep it. More wise, let's keep it. This is the standard. It. What is my standard? Just Allah is al rahim You know, Al-Rahim, al qawi Al-Alim. If this is spreading knowledge, yes. So let's keep it. Let's move toward that direction. So you cannot regress in the name this was done before. before. Because what, what I am able to achieve today is not my ambition. It's, this is what is possible to me. But my son, he may have better condition. He can take things, the idea of Rabb, to elevate it to higher level. But he, he should not take what I was able to achieve as a reason that he should not move toward better uh, state. This is very interesting because even I was talking about uh, something with a brother, with a, a brother Walid this morning. About I told him, let's say, for example, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought uh, the king of Egypt, gave him uh, Maria uh, as, you know, at the time there's, you know, Imam, the slave, as a gift. He accepted, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and after that he he uh, freed, 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 gave, freed her, gave her. So this is the, there is a, there is a mission. Normally, freedom here is, you know, because we are ibadullah. So really, we are created to be free, so we can move. And this is the, the role of the prophet. The prophethood also is uh, is is to to break the chains. Uh, the Quran will say, uh, so really we are going to break this what is chaining you and all this burden because what was solution today is becoming burden so you really you need to have that ability to move because this is the purpose of this life okay I can learn from our Rasulullah that the freedom is the main thing and we should each time we have an opportunity to make it possible for a human being, this tahrir raqaba, we should make it possible. We should make it happen. But let's say someone else, I, I'm at, home, at my home today, and just someone will knock the door, Brother Shad, he loves me, I know him, and bringing um, a woman with him, and Tainaji, I'm bringing this woman for you, just take her. I just bought her, give her some money, and just, why, why don't take her? Rasulullah so used to accept this gift. This is very ridiculous, this way, this understanding. I will tell him, stop, Roger. This is, this is wrong what you are doing. You are slaving people after they become free. Rasul freed her, freed her. She used to be slave. He, he was not regressive. There's no regress there. You are really regressing with us, taking us to lower level. So this is, cannot be acceptable. So free the woman and just come for a coffee. <laughs> Thank you very much. But anyway, this is this is a wall of the shark. So in ayah four, women sharri nafathati fil uqad. And this is very beautiful because the Quran look, we have sharri ma khalaq generalization. Min sharri ghasik ida waqab. Any success, any higher achievement, anything, it can also enter uh, intense darkness. But also there is من شر النفاثات في العقد. And very beautiful. And نفاثات is, is you know you blow something. It's it's uh, is uh, here in the translation you cannot see that. But نفاثة is also you blow right. Yeah. So it's, it it reminds me also a ريح. 
the wind and even العقد we can measure we can use it to measure the speed of of wind but anyway this reminds me also this idea that there is always the enemy of good direction that always people they can look for that environment when you lose your balance the desire is not is you, when you come prisoner to you uh, to your desire is not good according to this islamic world view but there's a lot of people when they look to create that environment because that 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 weakness it's it's there where can that we can exploit you more this is why today they try to push younger people to get addicted with a drug with all type of disease because it's, it's, it's that environment when they can explode them at max so this is also we need to be aware of this so we can avoid it there is always nafathat fil uqad there is always people they are after to create an environment of evil so yes the evil can, but it means it, this is different different than the other the evil we were talking about here you are an organized machine if you like that that look to take humanity down so they can exploit them more and and slave them and this is why it's very interesting also to see this is different child is different kind of evil that we need to aware of and also this is also means that any ability to free ourselves from an, an intense darkness is not going to happen by itself is not going to be easy because there's a lot of people they love that state that that, that situation that love that state they see their future and their life within that state their interest so be vigilant measure always things by this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautiful names and fight for what you achieved so so you can get out of that darkness that can happen that can return at any time so don't be naive sometimes some people will come and ask you very weird question and that question can hide in in, in real life it's really a trap and this happened to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when they moved to al-Madina because at the time of Mecca and mushrikeen they are really outside they are fighting against islam they can try to destroy islam from the beginning but al madina they changed the strategy they become munafiq and, and, and nafaq is the tunnel they, they they are very well organized to not let the ummah go out of the tunnel to not ha- let al falaq happen and what they did they built masjid a mosque and for sure they spent a lot they make it look better what the rasul sallam built and that and what the quran will say never and never go there and pray and even it is mosque because even through mosque they can give it the wrong direction and to destroy the real direction that the prophet sallam is working to establish in the human being society this is very a very very good example when you can see this anafathat you know all this media today there's uh naum chomsky he has very good saying he said that the advertisement becomes the content of our media today. and all this news and the small things they are not really the content the content is really the advertisement we are bombarded from everywhere so to, 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 to make from us consumption society to have that idea of alhaqu al-takatha to be totally taken by accumulating things sometimes sometimes i find myself buying something i said why do this <laughs> why i drove two hours to buy to spend 100 dollars there's no need for it it's unbelievable so it means you are totally bombarded from all directions 
to divert you to divert you from the purpose of, of life it's really nafathat it's really nafathat so you should be very careful of, of that evil and later we will see because the Fara'ud of Rabbi Nas will talk about uh, yeah, Satan and also who are basically following his work Quran will describe later on إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَمْ They are working in, in the darkness. They are working behind the curtains. They are working really secretly. We don't we see the, the, yeah. the facade, okay? But we need to be vigilant about really what is behind the advertisement and what is really behind. So what is really the, the intent is really to work. Even Brother Najib was talking about this mosque that was built by the, the hypocrites. Quran will say they are yeah. wow. causing her. It is an evil. The intention behind it is not for people to bring people together, but to divide people. Masjid, and it's called Jama, is to bring people together. Is that right? So even that can be given a different direction and becomes really a source of evil and a source of, of hurt for the people. The last two weeks ago, there's a trap, question trap. And unfortunately, because the methodology is so bad, what we call scholar, they are not able really to answer this type of question. It was very well done question to bring this, you know, no, scholar, I don't know how <laughs> to call them scholar, but anyway, to bring them to that trap. What was the question? It was asked by a journalist. Asked by who? Jo journalist. Oh, okay. And was they talked about it in The Guardian, and they are talking about it you know, everywhere in Egypt, they are everywhere in YouTube. What was the question? What a Sharia? I don't know, they created this word of Sharia, and they make it very empty. There's, you don't see any meaning. You ask the guy, what's Sharia? He will say, we should implement Sharia. We should do Sharia. We should follow Sharia. What's Sharia, my friend? He does not know. Sir. You ask him what's Sharia, he does not know, know what it is. So what was the question? The question was, what's a Sharia? There's people, what Sharia is say, uh, say for someone who sleeps with his wife after her death and vice versa see this how how down and corrupt is the question and this is fahisha this is is this is the type of to implement corruption in the society and there is no more corruption than this there is no more inhuman things than this so instead of having this, this, this high value we're talking about that can help us, first of all, to understand the question. This is a question there are, try to help. But they don't, what the answer was? The answer was really, I do not have a text that can tell me you cannot do it. You know, so if you're going to do it, you can do it. It's bad, but I cannot tell you. But this is you do al-fahisha. You can even say this. This is you are taking people down even less than animal. This is the wrong, this is what we're talking about. Don't regress. Don't and this has never happened before. And they will say, oh, you look, look what Muslims are, are saying. Look what the Sharia is telling. It has nothing to do with Islam, has nothing to do with Sharia. It's, it's, these people, you, if, because there's two things. If, if it, it was a, at the individual level, it's an illness. And this person, you need to find a way to cure him or her. But if it's well-organized crime, you need to punish these people the hardest punishment. Because they try to take humanity at large at very down in imaginary level. You know, even the animals don't, 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 don't make it. But Unfortunately, I mean, to be honest with you, I was asked by one of my colleagues at work. He came to me and said, Walid, I have to ask you this, this question because this is what I, I, I heard or saw, whatever. I mean, 
So is this is this something I mean but why are these questions being given to public? This is the problem. But no, they put in purpose, they did. This is the idea. This was empty. This is anesthetic for you. Yeah, exactly. That's what I told them. I told them my 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 dear friend, there is a campaign today to impose mediocrity on the society. Exactly. The, the Ummah is really making mediocrity the prevailing thing. Thinking this, that, no. I told her, I told her, <clears throat> as, you, as you are asking me the question, I just came out from a service that we did for the cadavers, the bodies that the students do anatomy, learn anatomy, they do dissection. I said, we came out, we made a service for all these that bodies at the end of the pro of, of the of the uh, uh, of the course so that we pay back to these that people who lend their bodies for scholarship. This is what I am really interested in. I am not interested in this. I, if I was asked this question, I will really uh, 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 blow it back. That this is not something to be to be asked. Mm -hmm. The Dalai Lama was here a couple of weeks ago. He came to Loyola, mm -hmm. and there was like a row of students who prepared the questions for him. And one of the students asked him a question. He said, "This is a political question. I will not answer it." Next question. <laughs> he was very wise. Yeah. Why to bring me to that level? Why to destroy everything I am coming? To, to, and he was coming to talk about peace, mm -hmm. especially among, and he was, I, I swear to God, he defended Islam and Muslimin in the highest possible way, mm -hmm. in front of all of, of these people who were really present. The Dalai Lama, he was here in Chicago, and he gave a lecture at uh, Loyola. <coughs> And different places, but he came to. to but so, so I'm, I'm just. I mean, we need to be vigilant. Really, قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غصب إذا وقف ومن شر النفاثات في العقد. There is no way to get out of this unless you really cling to the light. You need to understand it, even to fight. You need to understand it. It can come from any and direction. Yes. And this is very deep understanding, different levels. This question we're talking about, it wasn't the question, is not a question. You need to be to, to think about it and to see what type of 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 of, yeah. of person or, or or organization they're trying to drag you to, to the wrong direction. And this is, unfortunately, this is, was a member of Al-Ittihad Al-Alami Al-Ulama Al-Muslimin. It's a member of the Ittihad Al-Alami, the International uh, Union of Muslim Scholars. But the, the person who questioned was a Muslim? The question was... Uh, she's, she, the question is, again, it's not it's an uh, innocent question. You cannot tell the other stop question, asking question or making traps. <laughs> Your weakness is not a reason that the other does not exploit you at the individual level or the nation level. You need to work on yourself. That's why you need to fight. A'udhu, this is my way. A'udhu bi rabbi al kol. Say, this is my way. This, I'm aware of evil. And I am here to fight that evil and I know which direction, what type of evil, because you cannot fight all this evil the same way. Every type of evil <coughs> here has its own science, how to fight it. Uh, like, what should we do like next year? Because we have basically finished the assignment that we put to ourselves to look at the early daily messages of uh, uh, this matter of Islam basically uh, and how Muhammad Sallallahu was really able like, to do that. I, I think we should uh, at one point uh, get together and uh, start really putting 
these ideas really together and see how these uh, uh, building the blocks okay, come together to see really uh, the, the vision, like as if you are putting them on, on the table and looking from above and see how they come together really like to um, describe to where, where the, the society is really heading. And again, if we don't know where are we going, it's a problem. You see, because we will, the, the, this information will not really help us to really achieve any, uh, any objective. Uh, and this, this is what we were really trying to do. If you look back, okay, you can see how we were able to infer from these early messages what was the situation at the time. It's very important because really this is the best document that we have, the, 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 the most uh, uh, authentic document from that era, if you take it fr uh, from the, the, the time when it basically appeared. Okay. So if I really want to understand that period, okay, the best uh, mirror to reflect that situation is Quran. Uh, this doesn't mean that I, I don't have to look for other things, but re Quran remains really, really the best. Um, uh, and so it is possible to understand the social context from the text itself and then see how the text approaches that context, that situation, and uh, uh, tries to really make or affect really a, a change. Um, and so I, I think it will be very helpful, uh, probably, I mean, uh, uh, some, uh, when we start next year, before we go into the next really assignment, if you like, uh, or, or curriculum, we can uh, do that and we will have really the, the summer to reflect on what we have done over the last two years and try really to put really things together. So it may not be really a bad idea to listen on, on YouTube to some of these really lectures and uh, and this, again, please, this is very important. What we have said is not Qur'an. Qur'an remains above and beyond whoever really <coughs> say anything about Qur'an or reflects really on Qur'an or try to extract from Qur'an really the, these really meanings, okay? So Qur'an remains open book, okay? And its meanings will have no really limit. Okay, probably if we do the same thing in a few years, we'll probably have completely different approach, completely different really um, uh, uh, inferences. Okay, but it is a start. Okay, it doesn't mean that uh, that we have all the time to to perfect everything from the beginning. But we hopefully uh, will be going in that direction to approach uh, that level of, uh, of perfection. Um, the idea that, and I, I would like to, I mean, this is really open, but I think we, uh, because we have really learned about this early time of, of the message, uh, and basically in Mecca, so it may be a good idea to look what happened in Nadira. And really the first a surah that was revealed in, in Medina is Surah Al-Baqarah. Now, this is a, the, the, the biggest surah in, in, in Quran. But it may, it's, I mean, I guess it's an ongoing project, so we can start, okay, basically, as you can see, Al-Fatiha will be revealed after the, 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 the surahs that we are going to discuss today, the last two surahs. In, and the uh, order of Qur'an that we, uh, as we know it now. Uh, and so Al-Fatiha will be also the beginning of the, the, the Qur'an <coughs> in its uh, uh, final order, okay, followed by uh, Al-Baqarah. There is a, uh, 
a, uh, you may know uh, this author, uh, Zia Uddin Sardar. Uh, he wrote recently a book. And in fact, he was in Chicago. I didn't know about that until after uh, words. But he, uh, uh, because of this new book, it's called Reading Quran or Reading the Quran. Okay, Zia Uddin Sardar. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing about uh, at least the first section, okay, he talks about uh, tafsir in general, okay, and he talks about then he takes Surat Al Fatiha and then Surat Al Baqarah and try to make out of it like a prototype of how we need to approach Quran. Uh, it's another way, uh, uh, and uh, uh, I think it will be a good. A reference or something that you we can read during summer so we will be better prepared for uh, the, uh, uh, the next year really uh, if you like curriculum more so is, is that something that will be helpful uh, i think because if we try like to go over everything revealed in mecca it will be a thing i mean <laughs> all our life is, is, uh, but I think it is uh, important to see also how things were really translated okay, in, uh, in, in Medina. I think it's a good idea. If I understand correctly that uh, what you are saying, what we have in the next uh, mm -hmm. assignment, what we have learned so far <coughs> to, uh, to uh, how can we, we implement those yeah. ideas yeah. in our life mm -hmm. so we can be benefited and our surroundings can be benefited. And go along with you know, the and, uh, because everything we are really trying to do is really just to like give everybody the, the, the chance to to see and to build on, on that experience. Okay, we are not really here like to uh, uh, spoon feed. Okay, I mean uh, uh, people around us, but we want to try to to um, facilitate. For them, like to go start to, to self teaching, also okay, but with some background that will help, okay, to uh, uh, come up with a better understanding, higher levels of reflection, and Quran lends itself, as you have seen. I mean, it is really open. And uh, when I always say, I come with three ideas, I come up, I come out with them. Okay, because of the interaction, okay, and, uh, uh, and this is really what is interesting about the world of ideas, that they uh, enrich, okay, uh, each other, and, and this is how uh, things really um, uh, uh, progress yeah. forward. <coughs> so when, when you were uh, coming, Sorry. you were saying that uh, uh, the, the book by uh, uh, Zia of Bin Sardar yeah. may be a good uh, uh, summer reading, okay, at least the first section where it talks about, I mean, Al-Fatiha and al Surah Al-Baqarah, so that will be a good uh, preparation for next year. Yeah. Uh, take it, the, I, I, can, I will promise you it will be beyond. But it, it, it's, it's always helpful, yeah. okay, to see uh, the words of others where they have reached and then it will stimulate yeah. you, like, not to take it, I mean, uh, literally, but to, to basically... Inspire you. you gave us the name a few months ago, yes, actually, yes. I gave it to my dad too, and we, uh -huh. we both read oh, it, it's okay. easy reading. Easy reading. I haven't read the whole thing. Yeah, easy reading, start. that's, that's uh, definitely... Again, I mean, uh, we don't have, I mean, any book. We don't have to agree with everything that is said, but it, it really it may open the uh, uh, the forum oh, there we for are. Yeah. for the okay. discussion. Uh, otherwise, if everything we take it and accept it, it's, I think it is a form of gullibility, which is, should not really be the case. Okay? We need to, uh, to think for ourselves and, and each other. Uh, this is how uh, we basically develop. Okay? Okay. Okay.